be their focal points right. going forward. What about that? Uh, real quick, and we'll get back to Paul. You know, I, th I think a precedence has actually been in uh, report development. Yeah. And in fact, before we started calling it Agile BI, uh, really uh, a lot of teams had gone to this uh, 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 highly iterative process where uh, someone would um, uh, 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 propose a new report, typically some kind of business user, uh, and then uh, you'd get a fairly quick response to them and go through the catalog and say, well, you know, in our report, in our body of reports, we have something that seems really similar to what you're asking for. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, um, for a lot of teams, they would just start altering existing reports and say, is this getting closer to the look and feel you want? And you try to tell the business person, forget data for the moment. We're just mm -hmm. talking about presentation and delivery. Does this look like the kind of delivery you're looking for? Right. And uh, that would be highly iterative. And in, in fact, you'd have the report developer and the business person in the room together. And some people were doing this 12 years ago. Yeah. And so that's actually been a really great precedence for Agile BI. Sense, and I yeah. think of... I think of uh, that kind of report development as being the thing that's easily uh, made agile. Yeah, as you were and, saying, there was yeah. a meeting for that. Yeah, right? and I think and I think that's one of the one of the the, mm -hmm. the real breaths of fresh air that this whole agile conversation has brought us to is to say, we've been trying to get business and IT to talk for how many years, right? So now, as a cornerstone of this methodology, right. it's an open collaborative environment between business and IT. You have to have that to make it work. And the other thing that I think is, has, has really accelerated the stuff we're talking about, report de definition and things, yep. is we don't have to come up with a monolithic uh, requirements document mm -hmm. before we can start. Requirements, because of the close collaboration and the interaction, the true interaction between business and IT, that requirements process is much more interactive, more iterative, and it can change and be more flexible on the fly. So we don't have to wait six weeks get approval on this or to, everything right. is, everything is much more condensed mm -hmm. and the collaboration effort is much more and your 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 business requirements gathering isn't uh, I'm going to go do that and then I'm going to put it over here and let it collect dust while yeah. I go to everything else for 6 months it it's iterative and it keeps that, building that calls for a new kind of project manager too because mm -hmm. those are our playbook guys yes, i mean right. that's i've worked with them we all work with them in our own organizations and you know how it goes you you, you do gather you 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 write it out you spell it they stick to schedule their schedule hawks mm -hmm. and schedules tend to move mm -hmm. out you know and they tend yep. to well we'll meet on this in a week and, a and week that's is not the that's right, right. Or they to come back well wait a second i have to revise my gantt chart right. and that's right. a completely different <laughs> education for me i mean ken yeah. Collier developed a class called agile agile leadership yeah. And he taught it on Sunday. We're going to do that for a full day class because it, it, it's a very different process. People have to think differently because yeah. there's a lot of the self selection of teams, mm -hmm. the self management of teams. That's very, very different than how we've run traditional BI. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. I think, I think these, are all, these are all great issues. And I think it is going to call for a sort of a re identification of skills in the marketplace. You know, we do look at technology a lot, and it's an important enabler. And some of the tools I think that we're working with now really are helping us do our jobs, but it really does come back to that mindset and steering, you know, rowing in the same same direction. So what, what yeah, do you think? Yeah, also, you know, just tying on to what you're talking about there, uh, uh, there need, there, if we're really to become more agile, more speedy in delivering BI products, mm -hmm. uh, there have to be some changes made in process, but also in mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, <laughs> the mindset I run across, see, I'm dealing with a lot of back-end data issues as well as right. data integration. And, uh, you know, we have some really excellent best practices in data warehousing. We really do around uh, very carefully uh, studying to be sure we find just the right sources, uh, being very careful with data transformations to make sure it's really uh, uh, that we're not losing any value from the data as we transform, that we're going to models that are really going to be useful. With those models, uh, we really want to have hefty metadata management, nowadays master data management, and other things that help us to document and beef up the semantics uh, around data. You know, I could go on and on. You've heard this before. This is all, this is sacrosanct mm -hmm. stuff. Absolutely. And you start talking against that stuff, there are people who push back and say, no, 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 wait, I've built my yeah. career on this rather slow moving but high quality process exactly. and, and see that's the thing how do we speed it up without losing the quality yeah. of data without losing the intelligence of models and so on and so forth that's one of the really hard parts that's a real soft skill thing too i mean mm -hmm. I'm just, it is you got yep. some I, I go to a show like this i meet some of the most intelligent left brain mm -hmm. people yep. i could never you know i could never understand after a certain point once they got into their stuff but you also understand the success criteria in a business now is, is a lot more immediate, a lot more demanding. So, 
I, I think in a lot of those things, uh, and also there, it's funny. It's not even. It's not just agile. There are certain areas where a lot of the work is being shifted. Uh, so much of the work we do in BI, data warehousing, data modeling, has been front loaded. Mm. We've got a lot of this planning process, yeah. the requirements yeah. thing, and I'm seeing across the board. I'm seeing a lot of people just pushing real fast to get to some kind of prototype. Mm -hmm. And once you get to the prototype, that's when the iterations kick in. Right. That's when you know things we associate with agile kick in. And the thing is, there's a lot of prototype. And, and here's the Here's the catch. Uh, I have a Russian it's friend. Always a catch. I have a Russian friend of mine. He <laughs> says there's nothing more permanent than a temporary solution. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful with prototypes because somebody, sometimes people, especially business folks, they go, "Well, it's close enough, you know, you know, uh, deploy it." So we have to be willing to, uh, you know, create a prototype quickly, but also understand that a lot of them should die and right. die away. And see, that's the thing. You don't want to put too much of this front-loaded work into a prototype that's going to die. You know, you wait until the prototypes that have survived, and then that's when you go back and do all that careful data preparation I talked about, and all the really careful, you know, uh, uh, accoutrements of fine uh, report design, right? Mm -hmm. So does that make any sense? You know, you just wait I to see what prototypes survive. I think that's where, that's as we move forward in this whole agile mm -hmm. methodology, agile world, that's, that's where some of the rub is really going to start to happen, yep. is when they really start getting into your world where you live every day right. and say, okay, how do I grow this from the standpoint of making an enterprise? How do I yeah. do that uh, and get that done? That's that's where I think some of the rub we they haven't figured out yet. And I mean, I think they'll get there. I think we'll get there as a, as as a community. But it's gonna it's gonna take some time. Yep. Yeah. I mean, another area that uh, comes to mind. It's uh, you know it's hard for me to have a conversation without bringing up big data analytics recently. But the kind of uh, the kind of open-ended discovery analytics we're finding with big data recently is agile inherently. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it, it does what I was just talking about. You typically grab a lot of raw source data. You typically have a, a you know one or a small team of business analysts who put together a uh, analytic data set very qu very quickly with little or no concern about uh, you know preparing the data. And really they're just uh, they're trying to build an uh, you know an early data set that will help uh, give them the aha moment or answer some business question. And uh, once they do this stuff that really looks like poor practices compared to what we usually do, then they sort of realize what should survive from that process. And that's when they go back and they start doing all the careful stuff to institutionalize it. Because yeah. even in something that's as free form almost as you know, riding the range with no barbed wire kind of thing is this big data analytics. Even that eventually should have a product of right. BI <coughs> that does have all the careful semantics and, uh, you know, a really good body of reports to go with it. It, it just goes to show us, I think, that the, not only is the business environment dynamic, but the technology yep. environment's dynamic too. And it's all, it's all the more reason for this sort of collaborative and engaged you know, as you say, just faster. Maybe not, maybe the word's not agile. Maybe yep. it's just about faster. But that that's all about engagement. It's about people skills. And you do, you know, you see the speakers here, and you can understand why people are successful at what they do. Mm -hmm. They're very smart, but they're also really good communicators, yeah. right? Yes, exactly. So, okay, More fun stuff ahead. Yeah, I think I think we can count on that, and we'll be looking yeah. forward to that. Uh, I don't think we solved the problems of the no. world today, but it, <laughs> but it was a good start, right? And we'll see what the stock market brings us. No, just kidding. Uh, it's been great talking to Paul okay, Kautz and Philip Russell with the Data Warehousing Institute. I'm Jim Erickson with Information Management Magazine. Check out the uh, resources at tdwi.org and information-management.com. Thanks very much.